In this video, I'll be showing you my 1 in 350 scale French battleship Richelieu. The plastic kit is by Trumpeter, the detail kit is by Flyhawk, and the deck is by Pontos. This is my fastest built ship to date. It was completed in around six months during a very strict COVID lockdown. The ship also arrived damaged. The bow had been hit by what looked like a pole that went straight through the box and uh, hit it on the very tip of the bow, causing the whole bow to bend and then snap off. And then with a lot of putty and glue and filling and sanding, I was able to smooth it out and make it look as if it was never damaged. The only consequence of this is that if you look at the leading three portals, there's some slight reduction detail. The little arc that goes above it to divert the water has been sanded off because well, I had to sand in that area because all the portholes weren't even there. I had to recreate those little portholes with uh, the drill bits and everything. As for the kit itself, this isn't a very complex kit to build. The, the complexity of a kit largely comes down to what kind of superstructure it is. It's not really the actual kit that determines it, it's the ship. So the superstructure on the Richelieu is not all that complicated. Things are fairly squared off. There's not so many strange shapes that you have to work around. And then the other thing that really adds complexity to your ship is the camo pattern. So of course this has disruptive camo, which makes it more complicated than ships that don't have a disruptive camo pattern. Even still, the camo pattern on the Richelieu is not all that complicated. It has mostly straight lines joining at 90 degrees that align nicely with everything on flat surfaces. So in the end, it's not all that complicated to paint. When it came to painting the camouflage, the biggest question that I had was to do with this fading effect. The painting guide and the schematic drawings that you find online don't show the fading. They show clean edges on all the lines in the camo. But all the photos of the ship show it faded. I don't know what caused that. I don't know if it's some very specific consequence of the weather in which the ship was in that somehow managed to fade those sort of trailing edges rather consistently but never the leading edge of the, of the darker color. But... For whatever reason, the photos all show it faded. So call it an error, call it a weathering effect, call it the actual realistic representation of what the ship looked like. I don't know, but that is what it is. The photo etch kit for this ship was also not all that complicated. A big part of it comes down to the anti-aircraft guns. In this case, they weren't, um, they didn't have brass barrels. It's just folded photo etch which does simplify things. They are a lot easier to build when it's just folded photo etch, but then they also don't look as good. They look much better than the plastic kits because at least they're in a more appropriate scale, but they don't look as good as uh, anti-aircraft guns with brass barrels or even the resin versions that you get in some kits. Moving on to some history and why I chose the ship. It has a bit of an interesting history. The ship was commissioned in 1940 Richelieu was the lead ship of her class, and it was the last class of battleships built by France. A part of the Richelieu's history that I find interesting has got to do with Operation Catapult. Vichy France was at the time in control of the French Navy, and the British did not want the French ships to fall into the hands of the Germans. So they launched Operation Catapult in an attempt to neutralize or destroy the French ships to prevent this from happening. And in this process, there were some rather interesting battles. Mers al Kibir is one of the engagements that happened in this, in this operation. This is not where Richelieu was. It's the larger portion of the action. It's a very interesting battle, though not necessarily just because of the action that was taking place, but also the, the politics and the thinking behind it. Jachinifel has a very good video on it. I think it's a fantastic one to watch, and I really recommend you go off and watch it. I'll put a link in the description so that you can find that video, and he will describe the whole situation in much greater detail than I can, or I would be doing as a poor repetition of what he has said. But part of that operation was also an attack in Dakar, where the Richelieu was, and it got damaged. And then uh, while still under the control of Vichy France, they repaired the ship and then there was another operation and got a little bit more damage again. And then eventually Vichy France was uh, invaded by the Germans. And then at that point, Richelieu then did defect to the Free French Navy and it sailed off to the US for 
repairs and uh, refitting. And then eventually it actually came back to, Euro to Europe and it joined up with the British and Royal Navy and it uh, conducted some operations with them. So it's quite interesting that there's the ship that was attacked by the Royal Navy then coming back to sail with the Royal Navy. I think that's kind of interesting. Although of course it was under the control of a different government. British then spent the rest of the war fighting for the Free French Navy with the Allies. It did survive the war and was ultimately decommissioned in 1967 and broken up in 1968. I learned a number of lessons from building the battleship, or rather you could say I tested techniques on the Richelieu that I would then apply to other battleships. So it was kind of like a, a testing round. And the reason for that was because I had been doing tests on Nagato and Yamato where there's a just a single shade of paint and it's really easy to correct. And I then wanted to try those techniques on a ship with disruptive camouflage to make sure that I could recreate them again in an environment with these more complicated camouflage patterns and have it still look good and know that in doing so I wouldn't damage the ship at all. So I completely built the ship as I had with all the others with the intention though of applying panel liner and doing some light weathering. And what I wanted to do was make sure that I could complete that process without having to do any corrections to the ship after I'd done the weathering. Because if I could do that, I then knew the technique would be safe enough for me to go back on all of my other ships that do have disrupted cameras and be able to weather them without having to worry about damaging them to the extent that I then have to try and color match paints and do touch-ups, which would, which would have been an absolute nightmare. And the process went well. So this was the first ship that was, you could say, weathered on completion. And it was also the ship that then gave me the confidence to go back and weather all the other ships with a technique that I then knew to be safe. The other thing that was done for the first time on this ship was to use Easy Line for rigging. Rather unbelievably, I got this far down the process of building ships using embroidery thread and ironing out the thread one bit at a time. And, uh, well, Easy Line, it lived up to its name. It was considerably easier to rig. And this also was then the catalyst for me to go back and cut off some of the less desirable you know, <laughs> rigging on the other ships and, and redo it with Easy Line. So overall, I did quite enjoy building the ship. It is a very different looking ship. It has this very interesting quad turret uh, layout where both turrets are on are forward of the ship. Also quite like the camouflage and the fading. It also makes it look very different to all the other ships. But in total, this was one of the easier kits that I've built. Um, the thing that added probably the most complication was fixing the bow, which is not really the fault of the kit. It's the fault of me thinking, well, let's buy some flammable stuff and send it by ship and see what happens once it's been sitting on the sea for six months. And well, it turns out it didn't survive so well. Despite the damage that the ship arrived with, I think it turned out very well. I'm quite happy with it. And that's it for this video. Thanks for watching. Cheers.